In our past videos, we've put all kinds of things inside of a particle accelerator. But what's always been missing from these videos is footage from inside the accelerator. Now, this is a really big ask. The beam inside this thing carries trillions of electrons at millions of electron volts. If the energies of these electrons weren't bad enough, the beam itself delivers an electron dose of hundreds of thousands of gray in just a few seconds. This is absolutely catastrophic for cameras. And for reference, just five gray is lethal to humans. So this beam delivers a dose tens of thousands of times stronger than what's required to kill living tissue faster than we can blink. So a normal camera wouldn't last a fraction of a second inside this thing. So the whole premise of the project is basically, can we build a camera that doesn't instantly get destroyed? But how do I even begin to shield a camera from a particle accelerator? When people think of radiation shielding, many think of lead. And yes, lead will stop these electrons quite easily. We would only need about a centimeter to stop all the electrons at these energies. So why not just bury the camera in lead and call it a day? Well, when these high energy electrons are attenuated or stopped in a material and they lose their energy, they produce high energy photons or x-rays. High atomic number elements like lead are very good at producing lots of x-rays. Low atomic number elements like carbon produce a lot less. Now electrons are really easy to stop, but unfortunately the x-rays are not. So ironically, if we were to use just lead, we'd have a much bigger problem than we had before. So instead of using purely lead, let's take a different approach that utilizes a low atomic number material to stop the electrons and produce less intense in a lower amount of x-rays. Then, once all of the electrons are stopped, let's use a lead core to clean up those relatively less intense x-rays. With this design, we can think of the electron beam as a waterfall and the low Z material like a really strong umbrella. The umbrella blocks the water or the electrons and prevents the lead core from getting wet. Because if it does, we are making a bunch of x-rays that we don't want. For the umbrella material, I chose epoxy as it's mostly low Z elements like oxygen, carbon, and hydrogen, and I can cast it into pretty much any shape that I want. Epoxy has an effective atomic number between four and five. And if we compare that to the atomic number of lead, 82, we see that our epoxy produces over 300 times less x-rays than lead, a pretty good reduction. Now, unfortunately, the electrons aren't just hitting our umbrella. They are hitting anything within the beam, like the floor or our samples. Any high Z material near the beam will produce a lot of x-rays, and we should assume that those x-rays are flying out in every possible direction. So shielding from the x-rays just generated from the epoxy is not sufficient. We must protect the camera from all angles while still letting it see something. The first idea for this lead shielding was a lead box with an open cavity for light to enter and travel through a long tunnel. The light would bounce off this mirror and be directed towards the camera. This way, no x-ray could see the camera sensors without traveling through tons of lead. And while this sounds nice, there is a major downside. The light is traveling through this really long tunnel, and this comes with a really, really small field of view. But I decided to build it anyway because I had no better options and leaded glass is expensive. So to bring this design to life, I aim to cast it in four individual components and assemble them after casting. I first cast this piece, then I cast this one, and then finally I cast this one. What I meant to say is that I cast this one. But before I could finish, I received an incredible email. Lead Glass Pro, one of the lead glass suppliers I contacted, wrote back to me. They were actually quite interested in the project, and they even offered to trade some leaded glass for some of our Lichtenberg figures. So now apparently, Electron Impressions accepts cash, card, and industrial radiation shielding as forms of payment. Now, leaded glass is really neat stuff. Lead oxide is actually soluble in glass, so you can get transparent glass that is up to like 50% lead by weight. And so this stuff is great at blocking x-rays and great at looking through. And so with the glass now in my hands, I had no choice but to completely start over and redesign the case. By doing so, we could ditch that mirror tunnel in that tiny field of view and build a proper window. The new design consisted of our epoxy hat or umbrella, 
which was worn by a camera housed inside of a lead inner core with a small leaded glass shielded porthole to look out of. This entire inner core would be shielded by an outer core of lead plates. The purpose of this outer core was to prevent direct line of sight of the x-rays into these seams. So I then cast the first, the second, the third, and the fourth piece of the inner core. After that, I cast the first, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth components of the outer core. And I must say that lead produces some really nice looking grains. Once I finished casting, I assembled the case and I took a look at it. And I thought to myself, this is a piece of garbage and would never work. It was like I was just inviting the x-rays inside of my camera with these seams. At this point, I was really done dealing with lead, but I powered through and melted the camera case back down and completely redesigned again. I fused the camera housing and porthole into one solid component to remove the seam. I redesigned this piece and this piece to slip into one another to remove another seam. I completely redesigned the outer core to be highly adaptable and assembled into one solid body after casting. And I added a additional bottom piece to prevent direct line of sight through these bottom seams, as well as any additional much thicker piece at the top to give additional x-ray protection where it matters the most. I then cast the 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, and 11th component for the case. I then cast the epoxy hat. This needed to be cast thick to stop all the electrons. So I poured two inches of epoxy into this 3D printed mold and allowed it to cure. I then placed the top component of the lead outer shell on the top of this epoxy and filled in the rest of the mold with epoxy. Once every individual component was cast, I then began assembly. First, the lead glass was adhered to the front piece of the inner core using some hot glue. Now hot glue is used for a lot of things, but now apparently it's also used as radiation shielding structural adhesive. I then adhered the front piece containing the glass to the middle piece of the core using more hot glue, which actually held surprisingly well. After this, I made sure that the individual components of the outer core fit on top of the inner core and then used even more hot glue to assemble these components. After assembly, I had a much, much better looking product. Here we are looking at the lead core without the hat. I can easily remove this rear locking piece and then the entire outer core comes off in one piece. This exposes the inner lead core where the camera is housed. Both the inner and outer lead core sit on this plate with raised edges that lock everything into place. And of course we have our additional lead top which is now in the epoxy. This design is far superior to my prior two in every way and it definitely cost me a few IQ points to make but I would say it was well worth it. One more addition to the design I wanted to make was wrapping it in duct tape to reduce the amount of lead that I have to touch while handling the camera. And after this addition, I could finally call it complete. We have the epoxy hat, which stops the electrons and produces a relatively small amount of x-rays. And then we have the lead core, which cleans up the x-rays that this produces, as well as any stray x-rays. The next thing to do was test how a GoPro sees the world from within the case. And as you can see, there's a pretty good field of view here. I could definitely improve it by recasting this outer component and moving this wall a little bit to the left, but honestly, I really couldn't care less at this point. I was really ready to put this thing under the beam, but I was also incredibly nervous. Even with this improved design, I was still super scared about any cracks or seams that I didn't see for x-rays just to slip on in. But I was seriously done dealing with lead, so I decided to just send it. So at the particle accelerator facility, I loaded up the camera on one of our runs of acrylic to produce Lichtenberg figures, and I sent it in. You can see the camera travels on a cart down a long winding pathway as it approaches the electron beam and becomes far removed from us. As it gets closer and closer, we can start to see some stray x-rays make it through the camera's shielding and interfere with the sensors. Any normal camera would seriously be toast by now, but ours was alive and beginning to see the beam source. Trillions of high energy electrons are being ejected from here at nearly the speed of light. And as we move closer, we can start to see this beam interact with the acrylic at the end of our cart. 
And as it does so, we can see that brilliant Cherenkov radiation begin to become visible. This is actually the same blue glow that you see in nuclear reactors. The fact that we can see this at all in the cameras not being completely overloaded by X-ray interference is incredible and completely exceeds my expectations. But still, the camera has yet to actually pass under the beam. But once it does, we only see it receives a bit more interference and survives unscathed. Of course, when the camera came out of the accelerator, I had no idea if it actually survived or not until I removed the camera from the case. It survived! The GoPro survived! Dude, fuck yeah. so and so as you could probably tell, I was super elated to see that the camera actually worked still. We sent the camera back in with another round of acrylic to test repeatability. And we can see that the GoPro records just as well with no damage to the sensors. And so I'm proud to say now that we have the capability to record inside the accelerator, we have some really, really cool videos planned. So stay tuned for those videos. If you enjoyed this video and wish to support us, you can purchase a Lichtenberg figure or consider joining our Patreon where we offer our patrons a free Lichtenberg figure and the opportunity to irradiate their own objects of choice within regulatory compliance and our discretion. Thank you guys so much for watching and stay tuned for the next video which will employ some incredible footage captured by this camera.